Hi, my name is Phil Freeron, and in this session I'm going to be describing a documentation system that is based on XSLT. So XML is used for all content, and this is rendered dynamically in the browser with XSLT 2.0. It's using the Saxon CE processing system, and as the demonstration I'm actually going to be using a new demo version of the Saxonica uh, documentation system. So if I select the link now, that effectively what that does is that loads the Saxon CE processor and compiles the XSLT required, as well as fetching the first document in the document stack. Now, uh, we've got a conventional tree view on the left hand side, and if I collapse that tree view, you'll see that each entry here uh, corresponds to a different uh, document in the document set. And there are roughly a dozen documents that comprise the Saxonica documentation. And it makes up about 600 plus pages. So this is the tree view, which I've already discussed. Above that is a search bar. So if I type in substring, for example, um, will get various hits on that and so you'll get one hit for each page that contains matches and then you can just navigate through the pages to find the one you want. So I will re uh, refresh that to get rid of uh, the spell checking artifacts that we get as a result of that in, in Chrome's browser in particular. So uh, what else do we have on the navigation side? Uh, well, there's quite a lot, but it's kind of it's not obvious because it's kind of a, a standard features. So links work in the same way as you'd expect in a multi-page application, but this time they just result in a, a new part of the page being rendered, but not the whole page is rendered each time you click on the link. So if I select another element, you'll you'll see the same thing happen. So that means that um, you're getting the, the look and feel, really, of a desktop application, but happening using standard uh, languages all in the web. So I can press and hold the page down key, because the keyboard uh, f uh, page up and page down keys work in the conventional way, so you can quickly skip between documents. And so each time we uh, select a new page, what's happening is the particular element containing the data for that page is is transformed to HTML. Um, now there are three schemas in use in this documentation set. The top one is actually a uh, corresponds to an article element in the HTML5 standard. And then the second schema is a function schema that is for defining uh, functions and their prototypes. And the third schema is based on the java.content model. So it defines java.doc packages, uh, classes and the class members. And all three are combined into a single coherent uh, user guide where links between the different schemas uh, are completely seamless. So I can follow a link from within the documentation that is HTML5 to the Java doc documentation and back again in a in a seamless way and always with the same interface, no page refreshes happening. Uh, so that's the, the tree side of things. Along the top we have a breadcrumbs navigation bar that just shows us where in the tree we happen to be. So if we want to walk back up the tree we can just select the parent element and that takes us there. Um, in the lower right corner we've just got page down and page up buttons that correspond to the, the page up and page down uh, keyboard commands as well. Um, the other thing worth mentioning is this top uh, at the top here we've got the the browser clients own navigation system and it's important that our application navigates that in uh, the conventional way so uh, back so the history works in the conventional way and so then we can go previous or next on that um, also all these URLs are navigable and 
this is all achieved all from a single page and this is done through adding on an extra um, identifier, state identifier after the hash and it, this actually uses the, the hash bang convention to allow for SEO type work later on to allow uh, web crawlers to discover a static equivalence of this content. So if for example off, after the hash bang I want to go to the about article I can just type about there and it takes me directly there. Um, the other thing with this system is because everything is running on the, the client uh, we need uh, the tools that would normally be uh, operating in on server side things like link checkers so to add a link checker in I insert a special URL which only a, an administrator would be doing so if I want to switch on the link checker, I just insert this a test equals on URL parameter and now I can click on check for broken links and in this sample documentation we have a couple of broken links and it tells me that the anchor text associated with that link is alphabetical index and it's got a link to where that failed link is and this shows me um, the problem link and if I click on that immediately you will see what the what the issue is and the other thing to point out here is because um, this XSLT application is effectively running in two halves one half as the client the other half as the server so it has to respond to URLs that are not valid in the same way that a server would so it gives a page not found error message so that's going to be helpful for the author hopefully the, the user won't see those but um, it's, it's there uh, for assistance. So other aspects of this application are shown in various other areas. So for example, uh, we can do a Java doc search is just looking for Java doc keywords, perhaps the name of a class or a method. So I, I use the hash character to identify a Java doc term and I'm looking for any methods or classes with the quit name so that's not case sensitive but it must be an exact match and it's found me three matches so that it's found it in the validate class we've got a quit method in validate a quit method in query and a quit method in transform so uh, that's one other search method for javadoc uh, what I'll also do is collapse this to show that we support one further schema um, or within the function schema we have a way of representing all the functions in a, in a compact way. Let's um, remove that parameter to give us a bit more screen space. So here we've got all the functions and as you hover over different functions you'll notice that you get a, a description of that function, a brief description. So once you found the function you want you can then select it and, re and that returns a, a, the more full description of that function. And you'll notice in the tree that we haven't listed all the function names under the corresponding uh, parent node because that would be too lengthy and an inefficient use of space there. So instead, uh, you just go back up to the parent to list the, the full set of functions in an alphabetically sorted multi-column view that is easy to scroll through to get to the, the function of interest. So that is the demonstration outlined. And in further sessions, I'm going to describe exactly how this was implemented using XSLT 2.0 that runs in the browser alongside the different XML schemas that were supported for this application. Thank you for listening.